Good evening, one and all. On behalf of Dr. Agarwal's Institute of Optometry, I extend a to welcome to each and every one of you. Thank you all so much for providing this continuous support towards the optometry series. And here we are today for the 11th episode of optometry series. And the topic for today is myopia control spectacles. I would like to welcome you all for the optometry series. And Zulahi Ma'am is here. Hi, Ma'am. Welcome, Hi, Ma'am. Hi, Gomati. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for bringing in the moderator today, ma'am. So I would like to request you to introduce our today's moderator, ma'am. Oh, thank you. So first of all, I uh, welcome our uh, moderator, Mr. Mutaza. So when I was given this uh, job of doing this optometry series, the first thing came to my mind was the time when it was given. So it is the month of May. Okay. So May, we obviously, we all know here, it is going to be school holidays and then uh, we'll get more of children to the clinic so i was thinking about something we will have as a series related to children spectacle uh, dispensing or something related to kids so the first person who came to my mind was mr mutuza so i knew him from the time i think uh, from 2015 i don't know exactly but when i uh, heard about mr mutuza he was working as the Head of Professional Services at Lenskart. So after uh, I heard about him and then immediately we had our uh, Locus Prudentia also in 2016. So we also invited him uh, for a talk uh, in the session. So at that time he spoke very well. So first person come, came to my mind was him only. So I, I just approached him. He was also uh, very much okay. But due to some reason we extended and we postponed the session. So I wanted to make him speak about something which is very much important for this particular uh, type. So we all know myopia is trending worldwide. So we were in the lockdown period. So uh, the race in myopia is it's, it's going in a high peak. So the time where we start with uh, uh, diagnosis and then to identify what is the problem and then if it goes to be like after, uh, if, if the time is delaying, then uh, there is, uh, if you give it on time, the treatment will be best. So if it is delayed, obviously it is going to be a waste. So the second thing is the mode of treatment, what we give. So if they are aware, if the students are aware about what are all the uh, myopia controls are there, uh, the optometrist, if they are very much skilled to give these myopia control spectacles or the other modes of myopia control. So we are going to be a, a passage for the uh, school children as well as for the people who are going to be as a future. So obviously, uh, we are going to show this on the YouTube. So it is not only for the optometry fraternity. So it is to the world. So everybody can just go through our uh, video so that if it is going to be an awareness for anybody, then it is going to be a good thing. So that is why uh, I just thought of Mr. Muttaza. So I think he'll do justice for the topic and uh, I'm sure that he'll give more points to the, uh, to the optometrist, the professionals who are already there, to the students who wanted to give uh, myopia control, lenses or spectacles or any uh, the other forms. And for the people, uh, common people also, even if they are parents or if they are going uh, going to school, either like high school or high secondary children also, they will also be interested to see and they will also be a part of our awareness, myopia awareness. So that is why So I think uh, we can continue with our uh, people and our moderator as well.
Uh, ma'am, there is small technical issue, ma'am. I think uh, our internet is not stable at the college building, ma'am. Let's start in another one minute, ma'am. One or two minutes. Okay. Ah, uh, you are there? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So, okay. Sorry, we got some technical issue. So, thank you so much for joining us, sir. Listening to Zuleha, ma'am, we can understand one thing. Instead of welcoming you, I think it is time to say welcome back. So, we, I don't remember for uh, like uh, having you because I was a student that time. I was a student when you came for Locus Prudentia. So, it's, it's a huge welcome yeah. back, sir. So, thank, thank you. you for coming thank to you. the family. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just like wanted to confirm if we are live or 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 still not. No, no, no we are on live, sir. Yeah. Okay, live. okay, fine. Uh, thank you very much uh, for this opportunity. Um, uh, I'm a person who doesn't like to speak a lot about myself. So I would say I'm Murtaza Ibrahim. I'm an optometrist uh, by profession, trying to do my bit uh, in the world of optics and dispensing. And uh, uh, basically, like, you know, I can just assure you of one thing that um, uh, I can do justice to this topic of myopia control spectacle lenses because very recently, in this part of the world where I am uh, now, uh, there was a lens launched by uh, Zeiss on myopia control. And uh, I had given a talk there, there as well. Um, and uh, there's a lot which is happening in this segment. Um, I would leave it to the uh, uh, person who's going to present on, on the whole session. But yes, uh, I am available for uh, all the inputs and any questions that would crop up during the whole presentation. And at the same time, um, if there's anything which uh, I feel I need to add up, I will definitely pop it. Yeah. So with that, uh, um, I'll just uh, uh, pass on the baton to the presenter who is going to present for the day. Promoti, you need to unmute. So the presenter for today is Tayabu Nisa, sir. So before that, even though if you don't like to speak about yourself, because we have such an Indian person like you, I would like to give a very professional welcome to you. I request Latika to start our presentation. Yes, Latika. Before that, I would like to welcome Jenima, ma'am, our internship uh, head, and uh, Ms. Meenakshi, who is also another uh, in charge for the optometry series. Hi, welcome. Yes, Latika. Good evening, one and all. It's my pleasure to welcome you all for the 11th episode of Optometry Series. 
The topic of today's episode is myopia control spectacles. It's a great honor to welcome our today's moderator, Mr. Murtuza Ibrahim, who is currently the senior manager training at Rivoli Vision Academy for GCC, covering UAE, Bahrain, Oman, and Qatar. Also working as training manager in Carl Zeiss Vision Care, South India. He also served as clinical optometrist for Shankar Netralaya, Chennai, India, handling OPD and teleophthalmology project. Also served as head of professional services, Lenskart India, offline division. His areas of interest are dispensing optics, occupational optometry, progressive addition lenses, and trainings on professional dispensing. Welcome you, sir. Now, I would like to call today's speaker, Ms. Tayabaniza, for presenting today's presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Latika. It's Tayaba, I can start your presentation. Tayaba, you can start, Tayaba. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone. The topic for today's optometry series is myopia control spectacles. Introduction. So as we know, over the last few decades, the prevalence of myopia has increased in many parts of the world, leading to co concerns regarding the consequent cost of treatment, increased risk of associated pathology, and loss of quality life. So it is estimated that approximately one half of the world's population will become myopic by the year 2050, that is 2050, and the one tenth will become highly myopic. So have changing environmental, dietary, or other conditions simply shifted the frequency distribution of spherical equivalent refractive error at any edge toward more myopic values. So as one minute. So as a result, Never efforts continue. are being yes, ma'am. So as a result, efforts are being we continued to find effective methods to slow myopia progression in children. So these includes spectacle or contact lens designs, orthokeratology, pharmacological treatment, and regular outdoor exposure. So the prevalence. The prevalence of the myopia in the world is about evidences show that globally 22.9 percentage of the population had myopia and 2.7 percentage had high myopia in 2000 and projects that these figures i mean projects that these figures will increase to 49.7 percentage and 9.8 percentage respectively by 2050 so it is estimated that in 2020 2.6 billion live live with myopia and it is estimated to increase to 4.7 billion by 2050 so it is almost half of the global population so there is statistics suggest that the increase of myopia prevalence is globally rendering bird as a burden in the public health So it, is it a burden or a threat? So prevalence of myopia has nearly doubled over the past 20 years. So both Eastern and Western population exhibit the same troubling trend of increasing myopia. So there is no safe level of myopia with over 30% of MMD. That is nothing but myopic macular degeneration. So it is occurring in the people less myopic than minus six diopters. So every additional diopter of myopia increases the risk, risk of MMD by 67%. So 25% of people with axial length greater than or equal to 26 mm will develop visual impairment by the age 75. Factors that, triggers, uh, that triggers progression. So near work. By doing the near work for a longer period of time, it may trigger the progression of myopia. And next is urbanization. What is urbanization? It's nothing but the uh, developing population that is increasing amount of population in the uh, play, in a place or in a country. Next is the light exposure. A longer duration of the light exposure may trigger the progression. Next is the digital screen time. So methods of myopia control. So how we will be controlling the progression of myopia. So considering the significantly increased risk of pathologic myopia in those with high myopia, 
So control of myopia progression has become an important clinical goal. So current modalities for halting or slowing the myopia progression include First, <clears throat> first is optical interventions. So several studies have been conducted to assess the effect of bifocal, multifocal, and progressive variation lenses on myopia progression. So COMET 2 study sought that PALS of two diopters resulted in the reduction of myopia progression by 24% in three years. Next is the peripheral defocus. So when it comes to the theories of myopia control mechanisms, the long-standing contender is the peripheral defocus theory. So whereby the peripheral retina receives myopia def myopic defocus as a slowdown or stop signal for the eye growth. So these are the diagrams. This is the first one is the uncorrected myope. Second is traditional correction. Next is the optimal correction. By, uh, yeah, next. Next, next is the spectacles, peripheral defocus spectacles. So many optical brands came up with the different types of myopia control lenses that works on the effective minimizing the progression of myopia. They include Stellas from my ISLR, MyoSmart from Hoya, MyoVision or MyoKids from Zeiss and MySight from CooperVision. First is Stellas spectacles from SLR. So it is reported that the myopia progression is slowed down by 67% on average compared to the single vision lenses when worn 12 hours a day. So the stellar lens is said to incorporate HAL technology. There's nothing but highly spherical lenslet target. So the HAL technology comprises a group of aspherical lenslet on lavender rings surrounding a clear central distance correction zone that is said to produce a volume of myopic defocus signal in the front of retina. Next is hard lenses showed high myopia control efficacy and slowed down myopia progression by 0.80 diopters. That is 55% and axial elongation by 0.35 mm on average compared to single vision spectacles. So this is the diagram of uh, stellar lens. So how it changes the peripheral defocus in the patient with myopia. Next is the Myo Smart by Hoya. So defocus incorporated multiple segments, that is dim spectacle lens, a specially designed by focal spectacle is under clinical trials. So dims comprises central optical zone for correcting refractive error and multiple segments of constant myopic defocus of 3.5 diopters surrounding the central zone is based on the principle of simultaneous vision with myopia defocus for myopia control. So DIMS provides clear vision and myopic defocus simultaneously for wearers at distant, intermediate, and near objects simultaneously. Next is RCT comparing efficacy of single vision lenses to that of the DIM showed that at 52% lesser myopic progression and 62% lesser actual length elongation with DIMS compared to the kids wearing single vision spectacles over two years of age. Next, I mean, yeah. Peripheral defocus modifying contact lens is much more effective than the tested spectacle designs. So this is the optics of DIMS. So Stellas versus DIMS. Stellas has 1,021 tiny lens segments with different lens powers to create a volume of defocus. Whereas the MyoSmart lens design, tiny lens segments with a change lens power of plus 3.5 diopters, which is almost 400 lens segments and focus zone is in the center with the individual needed lens power. Next is MyoVision or MyoKids. It was Zeiss MyoVision Pro and Zeiss MyoKids are special single vision lenses designed enabling a production of myopic progression by average of 30% in children with a history of parental myopia. So it works by innovative peripheral vision management technology. So it reduces myopia progression by 30%. Next is MySight by Cooper Vision. One day, uh, MySight one day contact lenses with active control technology not only correct the nearsightedness, they are also the first soft contact lenses proven to slow the progression of myopia in children of age eight to 12 years at the initiation of the treatment. So children as young as eight years were able to handle the lenses confidently. Next, Next is orthokeratology. So, 
autofocal lenses are especially designed RGP rigid glass permeable lenses on overnight and designed to reshape the cornea and temporarily correct low to moderate myopia. Next is based on the hypothesis of myopia due focus on the peripheral retina. Several clinical studies on the use of ortho -K for myopia control have been conducted and effectiveness of inhibiting myopia progression with ortho -K with the effect of slowing the axial length elongation ranging from 32 to 63 percentage and the overall treatment effects around 50 percentage. Next, next is the outdoor activities. So increased outdoor time also appears to reduce the risk of myopia development, especially in school children. The high lighting, uh, the high lightning, that is the sun rays inhibits myopia shifts. So the risk of rapid myopia progression is as low as 54 percentage in case of outdoor activities. So evidences suggest that regardless of the amount of near work duration and parental history of myopia, children spending more duration outdoors during daytime are less likely to develop myopia and have less myopia progression. Next is the pharmaceutical interventions. So pharmaceutical techniques for myopia control includes daily application of low dose aptropine, that is my, also called as myopin. So studies on aptropine for the treatment of myopia Atom 1, 2, 3 shows that in a five years period, atropine 0.01 percentage eye drops were more effective in slowing myopia progression with less visual side effects compared with the higher doses of atropine. Next is this surgical interventions. So surgical interventions like laser corneal refractive surgery, intraocular lens implantation and implantable columnar lens can are established to effectively treat myopia. So they, however, do not halt the myopic progression. Late surgical strategies to halt my progression of high myopia include subscrital injection of mesenchymal stem cells and dopamine injection. So effective surgical method to halt axial length elongation in the posterior scleral reinforcement. So PSR, that is posterior scleral in reinforcement, involves modifying the sclera, remodeling and reinforcement of the walls of the eyeball. So PSR is found to be safe, effectively stabilizes the vision, prevents the axial length elongation, delays the chorioretinal degeneration, and ultimately halts the progression of myopia. So next is the rebound of myopia. What is rebound effect? So rebound effect is a, a state of free appearance or reversal of the conditions or symptoms or underlying state upon abrupt cessation of the treatment. So, so it refers to an increased rate of progression upon discontinuation of treatment. So when progressive addition spectacles were switched to single vision spectacles, the rate of progression was not greater and concluded that there was no rebound. But study involving orthokeratology and RGP lenses, treatment were switched between eyes after six months of lens wear. Eyes that switched from orthokeratology to RGP lenses exhibited a greater axial length change compared with the eyes that wore rigid glass permeable lenses in the first six months. So the later study also found that the discontinuation of the orthoke in kids younger than 14 years led to the rapid increase in axial length. So yeah. So these are the references. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tayaba. Now request our moderator, Mr. Muttuka, sir, to kindly share his views. Okay, so first to start with, I would want to just uh, summarize on the whole presentation and just uh, highlight a few key points on the myopia control as such. Uh, basically, the presentation covered uh, quite a bit of information on all the types of uh, uh, modality that is available for correction or maybe like, you know, uh, controlling the myopia. Um, <clears throat> the focus uh, majorly is on... Uh, keeping the control on the peripheral defocus. Now, when I say peripheral defocus, uh, when, uh, uh, maybe can I take a support of the presentation? Uh, it, it can be on the screen so that it, it's easier. I'll just uh, use uh, some slides. Yes, sure, yes, sure, sure, sure. Okay, we can have a presentation on. Okay, I can see some uh, questions coming in. Uh, I'll try to address a few of them uh, once we are back. Uh, but yes, 
So uh, yeah, so you can share now. Okay, uh, I I'll share my own screen. Okay, fine. That that works better. Hold on. So I'll. Okay, so I think my screen is visible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is visible. You can proceed. Okay, so I'll just uh, uh I'll just uh, quickly like you know this the few things that were shared, um, just to come up with the uh, overall uh, treatment option myopia. We have already discussed about myopia, but then uh, I think uh, this is something which we should be aware of, and uh, I'll just uh, quickly touch a base upon this. So what happens is in myopia, we are aware that you know the central light uh, is not touching the retina, and then uh, what happens is um, the focus is in front of retina, and you see this arrow; it is in front of retina. If with traditional correction, what happens is if I just use a single vision lens or say a contact lens, which is just one powered, or any any other correction method, then uh, the light goes to the retina. But then if we trace back the light. Then on the peripheral retina, the light is actually focusing behind retina. Okay, so this is this is something called as uh, hyperopic defocus. So ideally, what happens is centrally the light is falling on the retina, but then peripherally the light is going beyond retina and causing a hyperopic defocus. Now this actually, uh, you know, many theories suggest, and there are a lot of preferences which I have, but then theory suggests that because uh, uh, the light is falling behind, then there is a signal going to the eye that uh, even the peripheral retina has to grow so that the eye can see clearly. And this leads to the overall growth of the retina and this causes your myopia to progress if it is going to be with a single vision correction. Uh, for optimal correction, what is being suggested and the theory that supports it is like the central retina definitely should get uh, the myopia corrected. But then the peripheral retina should have a myopic defocus. So when we say myopic defocus, ideally the lenses should have uh, some power which can actually not cause the hyperopic defocus, but should have the myopic defocus. So this is the whole concept. And on this concept, the entire treatment option is actually being placed. Now, uh, atropin, how it works and uh, you know the ph pharmaceutical or pharmacological effect of uh, uh, is slightly different uh, in terms of concept, but this is one concept wherein you, we have this uh, hyperopic defocus, and then uh, optimal correction would always work at uh, causing a myopic defocus so that uh, the eye doesn't grow beyond certain stage. Okay, now uh, <clears throat> coming to the treatment option, as already uh, discussed, we have uh, ortho K lenses, which is like uh, you wear it overnight and then next day you don't wear anything. Daytime lenses, like you know, there are some myopia control lenses which are uh, which which mimics like a multifocal design, but uh, centrally they have a distance zone, so it it works completely different from uh, a regular multifocal design which we prescribe for press biopsy. Then you have atropine, and then you have glasses. Now, when we say spectacle lenses, basically there are generations of spectacle lenses which was already covered in the presentation, but uh, uh, I would just split it into two generations. We have first generation, uh, which is your progressive addition lenses and bifocals, which were used for myopia control. And then we have now the second generation. Now in second generation, uh, there are specifically designed, these are specifically designed uh, single vision lens, I'll say it's, uh, just to keep it as a, at a broader category. And uh, then you have DIMS. Uh, obviously it was mentioned what DIMS is. We have HALT. We have Care, which generally care is only in this part of the world, so I'll I'll not talk about care. And then you have dot. Dot is from again Cooper Vision. Now all these are different, specially designed uh, lenses for your myopia control. Now the advantage we are talking about, you know, control in kids, and the best advantage uh, of having spectacle lenses for myopia control is it is non-invasive. So unlike your uh, orthokeratology or contact lens or atropin. Uh, here it is non-invasive. But again, why we have generations of spectacle lenses? Uh, just to keep it very clear for all of you. First generation of spectacle lenses were uh, not uh, quite effective in rendering the overall uh, control that we were looking for. Second generations are seem to be working better. Now, when, whenever we are targeting a myopia control, any strategy that we apply, Basically, uh, the baseline formula should be at least 50% effectiveness. 
So just remember this uh, uh, word uh, or say the number, which is 50%. So atropine is found to be effective, 0.0.1% effective, definitely because it has 50% and above effectivity. Uh, if we talk about uh, efficacy of uh, orthokeratology, again, the lenses are showing efficacy at 50% and above. If I talk about uh, contact lenses, they are like good 60 to 62% efficacy. And if I talk about second generation spectacle lenses, then you will find all these spectacle lenses having good efficacy beyond 50%. Now, <clears throat> uh, again, uh, this was already uh, shared, uh, COMET study, but the one thing which I would want to highlight here, uh, particularly in this slide is the efficacy which was seen in the progressive lenses, right? Um, there was only 14% overall efficacy. So I said like, you know, if we have 50%, then, you know, uh, these lenses might work. The reason for uh, progressive lenses not working uh, very well for the myopia control was uh, the defocus or principle or say the high plus power which we need to create that uh, myopic defocus was only available in the base of the lens. It was not available for the distance portion, right? So the effectivity was like 14%. And kids who were esophoric and uh, having high accommodative lag actually benefited better. They uh, reported like, you know, the, the efficacy was up, up to 37.2%. But however, comparatively, you can see like, you know, if we, uh, if the control was uh, done using a bifocal, as you can see here, an executive bifocal, um, efficacy was 51% in children. So again, uh, this also gave a heads up that uh, if the lens portion has more addition area, then the effective efficacy was also be better. But again, uh, here it was found to be more effective for kids uh, who had this lag and uh, isoporin. So these lenses, though, uh, were found to be having some amount of control, but it was not enough uh, because uh, it is not clinically significant uh, to be considered as effective especially the progressive edition lens. And this led to the new generation of lenses, which we say, like, you know, uh, we have all this uh, new designs that have come in the market. So basically, uh, defocus uh, incorporated multiple segment, cylindrical annual refractive element, highly spheric lens set target. All these are like, you know, the lenses which works on the principle of creating a peripheral myopic defocus. Okay. But Diffusion optics technology, this is something different, which is from, again, Cooper Vision. Um, and it this particular lens design works on a principle of contrast. Okay, so we already spoke about the defocus principle here. Uh, this was already explained by uh, um, colleague uh, Taiba really well. And she spoke about, you know, what are the segment? It's like 3.5 diameter. The overall diameter is 1.03 mm, and there are 400 multiple defocus segment. And uh, if we talk, if I talk about uh, the efficacy of uh, the dim lenses, you know, 50% refractive effective e efficacy and 60% axial length efficacy, which was registered in the two-year trial, uh, and this was found on, on in, in the kids, children in Hong Kong, right? Uh, now, this is something which I would want to share. Basically, when we are trying to create a special lens, like say the central part of the lens, which is 9 mm, will have the myopic correction. But all these are like, you know, plus the uh, lenslet, which is causing a plus power. Now, the kid has to actually go through, uh, like, you know, both the zones. And this particular slide actually indicates what is the off-axis distance visual acuity, which means if the kid is actually looking through the, the plus aspect, okay, uh, how, much, uh, how much is the visual effect, uh, acuity impacting? So basically, these are some studies which talks about uh, the impact. Uh, three to six letter reduction from the area uh, of the treatment zone. Now, I'll also tell you what is treatment zone. I'm just going back to this design. Uh, basically, all your myopia control lenses, we have your vision zone or the optical zone, and then we have a treatment zone. So treatment zone is basically the lenslet which has high plus power. This high, high plus power, again, is uh, to create the defocus on the retina, myopic defocus on the retina. Yeah. So uh, from the defocus zone, you find like two, three to six letter for young kid, which is like uh, acceptable. Initial awareness definitely is there if you talk about the subjective performance of the lens when it comes to dims. Now, similarly, you have a halt design. This design is from uh, basically, if I have to call a commercial name for the lens, then it is 
uh, your uh, stellar lens which is available and it works on the volume of myopic defocus so basically the lens works on my, uh, myopic defocus and there's a lot of myopic defocus which has been produced uh, idea is simple we don't want hyperopic defocus to be formed on the peripheral retina and and you know uh, let the eye grow beyond uh, based on the in, uh, inputs from the light so this lens this was already explained there are a lot of uh, like you know there are about 11 rings uh, in total about 1400 lens led which is there on the lens and basically like uh, the concept is same but only thing is instead of uh, having a, a same power throughout the rings have different powers so it starts with plus six it ends up to 3.5 after the, the first five rings is plus six and then you have 0.5 reduction in all the rings the idea is to just generate a volume of defocus so that um, these rings will act as a treatment zone and the clear uh, space between the rings and the central clear zone will act as your overall vision zone now uh, efficacy of this lens is at 70% refractive efficacy 60% of axial length uh, uh, is found to be uh, controlled and uh, this is uh, again one year study which was done on kids and uh, was found to be really effective again the number 70 and 60 is something which we need to take uh, uh, from here because uh, like you know any myopia control uh, strategy should always uh, works towards at least having 50 percent efficacy yeah now this is the uh, again uh, i would call it as a novel concept because apart from generally working on uh, the peripheral defocus principle this particular uh, concept works on the contrast principle and and how it works is the high contrast basically uh, will uh, uh, send a signal to the retinal uh, like the photoreceptor that the eye should grow so high contrast will actually send a signal for the eye to grow low contrast will send a signal for eye to not to grow and uh, this particular uh, hypothesis was taken into consideration for lens design and the lens were then designed so that you have a central zone which is clear and then the entire peripheral zone which will have some diffusions like this will scatter the light and it will and the scattering will then result in uh, the overall reduction of the contrast so the central zone, which is just 5 mm, will be acting as a clear zone, but the rest of the uh, lens will act as a you know treatment zone as it will reduce the contrast. Now, uh, overall, what we wanted to just understand, uh, you know, from this lens is whether it was getting accepted faster and whether the kids were getting adapted to it. This is just a uh, like you know um, say a kind of. Uh, uh, response towards overall uh, you know lens wear uh, it's not a documented thing but uh, when looking to the treatment zone the image have softer appearance without losing the details is what was uh, documented now uh, coming to overall uh, like even dot uh, this particular type of lenses also has a very good efficacy which is like 59 percent on children this is just a one year study which has come in and uh, basically it uh, it works uh, Generally, the study was done for kids uh, in the early age, which was six to eight years. The other lenses, uh, the, all these studies are available from eight to 13 years. So overall, uh, you know, uh, this particular uh, you know, discussion shows that spectacle lenses are now also uh, equally uh, good in terms of efficacy when it comes to myopia control. But I will also back it up with uh, a message that uh, it is not just uh, uh, one treatment it can be like you know a combination of treatments you can always when when you're thinking about myopia control it it can be in combination of like you know you can be pharmacological and spectacle it can be contact lens and spectacle uh it can be combined one and at the same time it can be also like uh like you know the very strong point which which was suggested in the previous presentation which was outdoor activity like you know kids have to be uh, uh informed about the outdoor parents have to be created uh, have, have to be given the awareness that uh, outdoor activity plays a significant role in terms of the growth of myopia or overall like you know the impact that it has on the myopia control uh, a part of sunlight uh, and the vitamin d being processed through it uh, also has a, a significant uh, role in terms of uh, having the control on the myopia so many uh, factors are associated and uh, basically um, a uh, good thing about us uh, is like uh, now we have a lot of options as a clinician uh, 
atropine definitely like you know the recommendation would be it has to be uh, in due collaboration with the other uh, medical expertise like ophthal so who will also uh, uh, you know uh, will be required because it's a pharma pharma pharmacological intervention um contact lenses definitely the fits and uh, uh, because you know we are talking about kids and uh, if kids have to handle contact lens or if the parents are going to handle contact lens then definitely uh, there is going to be some additional uh, you know awareness which needs to be created uh, when we talk about orthokeratology definitely you need an expert uh, special uh, setup wherein you can always uh, look at how how the cornea is uh, like you know uh, responding to the orthokeratology treatment but uh, easy catch easy go would be like you know spectacle which is non invasive uh, the only thing here would be like you know we need to uh, spend some special time uh, explaining about the adaptation explaining about the clear zone explaining about the treatment zone and when it comes to selecting uh, the frame uh, and the fitting of these lenses uh, it's clearly evident that uh, there is only center 9 mm or 5 mm or 7 mm based on design uh, this center point should come exactly in front of the pupil so you know the pupillary distance and the fitting height of these lenses have to be really precise so the fitting instruction has to be given well um, so having said that with that information you know i'll just pass it on to uh, the uh, the panel here and also like you know if if there are any any questions that uh, you would want me to answer to yeah thank you so much for the explanation sir we got some questions in the chat box of the zoom as well as in the youtube i request ms meenakshi to kindly ask those questions sure <clears throat> thanks gomati before that i would like to welcome mr gopinath he joined our session seeing uh, our moderator for the today and this question based on research aspect is that he asked a question in youtube stating how visual functions are getting affected because of myopia control example whether the contrast is getting decreased or increase or comment about stereopsis any thoughts ah uh, okay so uh, basically like you know uh, i have already shared this on my slide and uh, this particular study was uh, uh, generally done only on the spectacle lens so i can be very sure in terms of uh, when i am actually making this statement so this study was uh, actually looking at how the other visual function gets uh, disturbed because of uh, myopia control due to spectacle lenses and uh, it also speaks about the adaptation initial adaptation so if i can just uh, share my screen again uh, so that this can be answered well um sorry so okay so this is this is the the one i i hope my screen is visible uh, uh so this is this talks about uh, halt design basically so on axis distance yes, visual acuity is it visible yeah right okay so i'm taking considering it to be visible so it on, visible, on yeah it's visible visual acuity basically it speaks about the central zone which is a, a zone where you know the prescription is there there's no significant difference in terms of vision off axis distance visual acuity yes there is like you know uh, two studies have not documented any major change but uh one study has documented that um, you know it is 3 to 4 letters right so that is off axis when when i say off axis it is the treatment zone so spectacle has a clear zone and treatment zone then then uh, there was also uh, on the contrast sensitivity basically contrast sensitivity function was uh, seen to have uh, reduced like you know uh, it was uh, lower in one of the study which was documented and impact on the binocular function all three studies they did not found any any impact on the binocular function of the children subjective performance uh, no significant impact reported um, after 3 days of wear so initially when when this was given yes kids were not uh, accepting it readily but then uh, after 3 days of wear they were fine now uh, the same same working is also available for your halt design it is not available for dots and the, and the newer gen, uh, generation of myopia lens and uh, th these are the study which speaks about the dims which is uh, your myo smart lenses and uh, no significance difference uh, when it is on axis off axis distance ratio like it 3 to 6 letter reduction is found this is like adult okay and this is for children and kids for children it was 2 to 3 letter for adult it was 3 to 8 letter 
Now, adult is like, you know, we, we refer here to a juvenile uh, myopia control. And uh, so, you know, kids which uh, who, who are like, you know, uh, between their like, say, 11 to uh, 17, 15 ish on an average age. Uh, on axis contrast sensitivity, nothing significant. Uh, off axis contrast sensitivity, which is from the treatment zone, one study has reported that. 0.02 logmar is uh, like contracts contrast sensitivity worsens, and then uh, impact on the binocular function for dims. Yes, the stereo acuity was by five seconds per arc. This is for children. The study was done by uh, Lametal for on children. So he found that you know uh, there's a stereo acuity which gets affected by five seconds per arc. And impact on the subjective performance. Basically, for children, uh, it was initial awareness and mid periphery blood. Uh, for adults, basically, it was recorded that there was eye strain, headaches, nausea, and necessity to adjust to the frame. So this is something which was recorded. So if these lenses are given, then this should be kept in mind uh, initially, like, you know, in terms of expectation setting, uh, uh, when we go ahead and dispense these lenses. So uh, from the spectacle perspective, uh, we have uh, this option as such. But then uh, again, uh, as I said, like very recently, um, uh, there was an opportunity for us to be a part of uh, the entire myopic control discussion. And uh, one of my colleagues uh, also presented on contact lens and uh, she was all, uh, looking at uh, the similar aspects and she found that it was, uh, there was no major significant uh, like impact in terms of binocular function and contrast sensitivity for kids who are using this uh, spectacle uh, or contact lens uh, uh, myopic control. Consequences. Hope that answers. Thank you, sir. It was very detailed. We explained. Second question is that when does visual impairment occurs with respect to myopia, sir? Okay, so I think uh, this was already answered in uh, one of the uh, right. uh, uh, slides, where, wherein it, it speaks about uh, you know as the myopia progresses and uh, uh, if it is beyond certain point, then there's a documented. Uh, I don't have the exact percentage figures right now on, on my mind, but then, yeah, my, my myopic uh, uh, macular degeneration and then retinal detachment, detachment and all these are like, you know, documented. So the percentage definitely was on the slide. Um, maybe, uh, you know, we can always uh, refer that. So 37% or something. Uh, and it is also not necessary that it has to go to uh, a very high level of myopia. Uh, the number which was documented was uh, like even uh, in the people who were found to be myopic below minus six. Yeah. Yeah, sir. So moving to second question, students have asked to explain something about defocus and myopia. How does peripheral defocus accounts in myopia, sir? So uh, this again uh, goes back to my slide, uh, which I which I was talking about. So uh, because you mentioned the term student, I am a, a big fan of students and uh, I would try to keep it simple. One thing is like I, we are talking about myopia, right? Uh, when we say myopia, 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 to keep it simple, the treatment would work on creating more myopia for the peripheral retina. Okay? When we say myopia, 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 the treatment will actually work for creating more myopia for the peripheral retina. Which means when we say defocus, there is a hyperopic defocus which is happening due to standard way of suggesting a treatment. If it is a single vision lens, Centrally, let's say if this is retina, centrally it will go on the retina, but peripherally it will pass beyond the retina. So I want my peripheral rays to actually come inside. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll try to put more plus lens and try to get these rays in front of retina. But the central rays is always going to be on retina. So defocus principle is there is a hyperopic defocus which happens uh, because of the standard intervention. And we want to ensure that there is a myopic defocus which is generated by the new lenses. So, be it orthokeratology, be it contact lens, um, and be it uh, like you know your spectacle lenses, it works on bringing those peripheral defocus. Yeah. But when I say defocus, defocus doesn't happen uh, like all of it is in front of the eye. There is always a in between zone which focuses on the retina. So there is a defocus and then focus, defocus and then focus. So it's continuous. Like that. Yeah, so moving on to the next question. 
why specifically plus 3.5 diopter lens okay so basically uh, see um, as i said first first generation of spectacle lenses right uh, it was done on different uh, addition powers and uh, basically like it was measured at 2 okay so uh, i don't know how 2 came into existence but they uh, somehow they found that 2 uh, is going to be more effic efficacious and then everything that had uh, that uh, all the uh, lenses that were generated in the first generation they were working on 2 but then uh, based on uh, the growth of the eye based on the further parameters based on some research they found that uh, anything beyond 3 is going to be effective and for this reason uh, your dims has 3 your halt has it starts from 6 and it goes up to 3.5 uh, and uh, like the one which is which is trending here in this market uh, they have two uh, different uh, editions one is at 450 and one is at 350 so that's the reason uh, the the only reason like if i have to keep it very simple uh, the additional power which was given on the lens as in the treatment zone was not effective in the first generation and that's why it, this was raised to 3.5 now why not 6 or 7 or 8 maybe you know that is going to cause a lot of uh, in terms of even adaptation there is going to be a lot of blur for kit to accept it right you just imagine holding a uh, plus 6 in front of kids eye okay so that is something which uh, they uh, they'll, they'll, they'll never accept so uh, compliance was also kept in mind so there are lot lot many factors which were taken into consideration before uh, arriving at what what would be the ideal ad which can be added on the lens okay thank you sir next question atropine is given on what basis okay so uh, basically uh, uh, i'll be honest here um, because it is pharmacological i am not inter uh, like no, not lot of intervention into it uh, but again uh, see atropin uh, is found to be uh, effic like you know uh, efficacy in terms of whenever people think of uh, myopia control the first thing which comes to mind is like you know this atom study and atom study has documented so many things so atropin is always considered see that there, there is also like maybe we we have been talking about all the concepts of defocus but one should always ensure that we should identify whether it is a progressive myopia right so if the refractive error between uh, you know say the first prescription and the next prescription which you are doing within 6 months shows you the difference of say 0.5 okay and similarly if your axial length is also going in accordance then you will think of a myopic control treatment okay now the treatment it is not you actually choose what treatment you want to give uh, sometimes it is also dependent on whether you have all the uh, facilities available to go ahead with that treatment but yes independently if you want to practice uh, then you know uh, try to go with a treatment option which is easier which is like you know which you can manage and control but if you want to co manage only then you know you can get into atropin again atropin to keep it very simple like you know um, 0.01 uh, percentage of atropin is considered to be more effective which was also on the slide uh, but if you, if the dosage has to increase and there's no uh, you know if the side effect has, should not be there then you need to co manage independently it will not be possible yes yeah, so next question from youtube which intervention method causes eye rebound of myopia um see basically the other uh, interventions um uh, where uh, like you know uh, the documentation is not in place from the research so i don't have evidence as such but then yes stopping atropin is found to uh, have a greater rebound effect uh, so it, it 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 has that uh, i cannot uh, really uh, uh, claim anything from the spectacle orthokeratology or contact lens point as of now in case of rebound of myopia it occurs at what rate like in what diopters the rebound occurs uh this cannot be a, a specific uh, number or a person uh, like, because it is again like you know it's very uh, dynamic and it depends from person to person now uh, the rebound uh, when you try to uh, understand what is the rebound or what percentage of rebound it also depends on uh what time the patient has come after st stopping the treatment 
if it is earlier then you know you you can calculate that rebound so there is no specific number to this but yes the rebound can be you know at a higher progression and it may it may lead to a higher progression so there are some studies which uh, talks about the rebound and uh, there are documented studies on atropine more than any other treatment modality okay so the last question is what is the cost of peripheral defocal spectacles uh what is the cost of i'm sorry what is the cost, cost of, of? Uh, peripheral deep focus spectacles be okay, them so or stellar uh, i am uh, like you know i i am not sure about what is what will be the price in uh, india as such like uh, you know if i have to calculate and just give you a rough figure of uh, you know the micro control lenses which is here in this part of the world and it should be somewhere close to about like 27 25 to 30k okay sir uh, that's, uh, that's, that's all what, with that's the what it works, works out here in in this this market it may be like you know different as well yeah okay. so i wanted to add few uh, questions yeah yeah uh, uh, like uh, we, so, we, so i will request you to join us am i audible yes i can i can hear you um... okay okay yeah. fine so yeah. yeah fine so uh, we were speaking about the efficacy of each and every lens so uh, can we discuss about the age group which uh, was yeah so i i was little fast while uh, discussing that uh, slide basically the dot lens which i said like was, is it works on the contrast principle that was done for kids uh, between 6 to 8 years so the sample included in the study was all 6 to 8 years uh but the halt and the dims these two lenses are done on uh, children's between 8 to 13 years. 13 years now why generally we are actually working on that 6 year bracket is basically uh the research shows that um, you know the myopia graph suddenly try to go very high from 6 year onwards so uh, that's that is why like you know most of the study is concentrated only on on that on that particular age bracket Okay, so if it is going to be a, a child who is not diagnosed at the age of six, so what will happen to the uh, progression if we are starting, like for example, uh, at nine years or ten years only, the myopia control lenses have been prescribed? Yeah. What will be the uh, effect of the control? Will there be progression, or will it will stay? So ideally, like you know, uh, to answer this, we'll have to take a first. First, we'll always need a baseline value. right so the baseline value is going to be the first uh, point like when 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 the kid is coming for the refraction okay now we cannot wait for another 6 months to understand if we, if if there is a myopia progression so generally what we do is uh, the the basic advice is uh, we compare uh, one is uh, for that age whether you know the uh, the myopia is high or low okay i did like if a kid of 8 uh, years you will expect hemotropia but if the kid is myopic okay then that is one indication if the hemotropization doesn't happen probably 6 years you know the kid should be having a slight hyperopic uh, this thing but the kid is already minus 2 minus 3 diopter myopic at 6 years and the kid is coming for the first time then it it directly shows that you know uh, there is a high chance of progression second thing is you also have like you know there are a lot of studies which talks about the expected axial length uh, mm -hmm. for the kid at that point in time so if we have this device to actually measure the axial length and then compare it with what is the uh, you know normal axial length expected for that age that will also give you an indication that the eye is growing so these two can be taken as a initial benchmark and from that point how much the growth is happening is like you know once you apply any myopic control uh, treatment and then you have to see after 6 months whether it is effective and what what is the efficacy this is that uh, you can then be uh, you know satisfied in terms of how much control you were you were been able to you know bring to the whole treatment option but it is not like <clears throat> like uh, you know it is minus 1 now maybe i get to know about minus 1 only after certain age and it is like lazy eye and amblyopia it doesn't work that way so you know it will not reverse or something it, it it's not on those concepts i think uh... we have got an extensive idea about myopia spectacles so there are different types of spectacles there are different designs 
and each and everything has its own study to speak about their own efficacy as well as their own uh, plus. Uh, so uh, exactly. everything, each and everything has its own uh, uh, good things as well. So it is our uh, clinician's work to find out which child is exactly. eligible and for... So uh, like, you know, we cannot be... Uh... Like you know, very limited in terms of uh, whether I'll be sticking to only one one modality or yeah. I'll be sticking to only one treatment option. Yeah. There can be a combination of treatment options, and at times you'll find that uh, only one option is not giving you that efficacy level. Yeah. So if we have to like you know really be happy or satisfied with the treatment uh, thing, and then again like uh, awareness of parent inclusion of them into the whole treatment process uh, will uh, you know significantly uh, overall improve the outcomes. Um, but again, uh, not just one treatment option, you can always think of uh, backing it up or using another option uh, together. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Muttaza, for uh, giving a very detailed uh, explanation. So thank you so much, Zulai Hamam. Thank you so much, Meenakshi. And special thanks to Muttaza, sir, for joining us today and patiently answering to all our questions. My privilege. I'd like to once again welcome you for another session, sir. So now you become like a family member. So for every uh, session, you Hopefully, yes. Hopefully, yes. Uh, uh, Juleha, madam, already knows that, you know, uh, this was like, you know, pre 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 postponing. Yeah. Uh, so I, I would definitely be, uh, it, it will be my privilege to be a part of another session as well. Uh, I'll definitely be uh, joining in. Thanks for inviting me for this, and uh, it's a privilege to be, uh, you know, among the student community and sharing whatever, whatever little I know with all of you. Thank you, Mr. And for all the special news for today is that admission is happening at our college. So if you want to apply for bachelor's, master's, fellowship, and internship, you can for sure call us. I will add the coordinator's admission coordinator number in the description box, and we got another new course. The course is called as integrated fellowship where the research is also involved in the course. Okay, if you want to know more happenings about Dr. Agarwal's Institute of Optometry, please do follow us Instagram and Facebook. And the new session for this week is we are also into LinkedIn. I will also add the LinkedIn link in the description box. Meet you all in the next time. If you like this video, give a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Thank you all so much. Joy.